K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. Turn up the sound and rip off the knobs. You're listening to K98Talk.com, the leader in Internet radio. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson. Sadly, today I have my um, programming director hat on, not my show host hat on. It's been a few days now since I've been able to be with you guys live, so I wanted to at least drop in for a second and give a shout-out to a couple of people um, while hopefully I can keep from coughing on the air. Um, I've had a couple of friends pass recently, one through Twitter. Uh, some of you may know her as Bo uh, Bossy Monica, so I wanted to just take a moment and say you will be missed, dear lady. And then I've also had a personal friend who's passed away who I won't be mentioning name of on the air, but for those of you who listen to me and you know her as well, you know who I'm speaking about. So just want to take a moment, uh, give a moment of silence to both of those folks, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to... Um, do a live stream of a Voices of Global Freedom radio replay that's one of their more popular shows we've done over here. They've got an interview with a uh, Kurdish general that if you haven't heard it yet, you definitely need to pay attention. All right, so we're going to take just a moment to do a moment of silence for the passing of two dear friends, one through social media and one that I knew in person, and then we will roll the uh, show for the day. And I do hope to be back with you guys, hopefully Monday. It's a holiday from the day job, so I plan on trying to get a few things done. Um, but depends on whether or not I can actually talk for more than a few minutes at a time because, as you can hear, I keep having to do random odd pauses because right now I kind of feel like an old man with emphysema. Anyway, um, moment of silence time, then the show. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us this weekend. Don't forget, we will have Voices of Global Freedom, uh, Global Freedom Radio tonight uh, live with their newest show, from 8 to 10 our time, which is actually not live for them, but we've been having difficulties with the Blog Talk platform, so I've just been live streaming it as soon as it's completed. And then we'll have uh, Red Pill Reality with Riscala uh, from about uh, 10 to 1. And then, or no, I'm sorry. Um, actually, I think we're going to do that a little bit differently tonight. Um, from about 10 to midnight, we're going to have a Valentine's Day special that the K98 FM folks did last night. And then we'll do a Red Pill reality with Rascala uh, from about midnight to 3. That way, technically, we are still airing the special on Valentine's Day. <coughs> See, I, I warned you that eventually I was going to start coughing. All right, <coughs> I'm going to shut this down so you guys don't keep having to hear me sound like an old man who's trying not to die. I'll hopefully be back with you guys Monday. Welcome to Voices of Global Freedom Radio. We are broadcasting from San Diego, California, Saturday, January the 10th, 2015. This is Roy Backpack Barron and our co-host Yoda. We bring our patriotic conservative audience news you can use and actionable tactics, methods, and strategies to survive and thrive in these dangerous, troubled times. We are proud to be syndicated with the popular radio networks the Spark Radio Network, K98 Talk, and the top five news picks on Top Talk Radio, along with Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, 
and other household names. Yoda, how are you doing today? I am doing <clears throat> fantastic, Backpack. Good to be on air with you again. It doesn't get any better in the new year. We have an incredible, timely, appropriate guest tonight. Gentleman's calling in from Europe. I'm not going to steal his thunder. We call him I.Q. Rizzoli with an incredible background. He's Iraq-born. He was tortured by Hussein. There is a price on his head now by ISIS and various al-Qaeda elements. So he is the most knowledgeable, experienced expert we could possibly have on in these dangerous, troubled times. So with that, we welcome I.Q. Rizzoli. Good evening, sir. And good evening to you, sir. We are delighted to have you on tonight. It's really timely. It's your show. How can you help our audience? We have a large audience listening to you tonight. What do you want to share with us, I.Q.? I'll tell you how. I will start with current events of what happened in, in France. Then I will give the audience, because they are new to the show, a bit of my background. And then I go to your questions, whatever questions you want to ask me. Is that all right with you? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I would like to take this opportunity to wish all Americans a much happier and a more successful year than the last. I would also like to inform them that they should not, I repeat, should not believe all that their duplicitous media and politicians tell them by going to their computers and reading articles about the same subject from different countries and or different points of view. Americans must become much better informed than ever before. And I shall explain to you why. The attack in Paris that resulted in the death of at least 15 people in a satirical publishing office and in a kosher shop were committed by Muslim terrorists to silence anyone criticizing Islam and or Muslims or making jokes about their depraved mentor, Muhammad bin Abdullah, as well as terrorizing civilians. The most outrageous and repulsive outcome so far from these events are the left liberal elite in France, in Europe, as well as in the USA, who keep deceiving the world by telling it that these vile criminals are not, I repeat, not true Muslims, when in fact and reality, these terrorists are the most perfect Muslims imaginable. Muslims will not stop their acts of terror, nor will the liberal leftist media, academia, Clergy and politicians admit that these heinous acts are mandated in Muhammad's Quran. The hypocrisy, mendacity, duplicity, and cowardice of most of the Western media compounded those of our politicians by refusing to print or show these very cartoons that caused the slaughter of 12 men of the pen who have been asserting their right to freedoms of expression and speech to be betrayed by their spineless and submissive colleagues all over again. Adding insult to injury, the president of France told his people that these, are, these acts are not Islamic, thus literally aiding, abetting, and colluding with the enemies of humanity called Muslims. Why do I assert the seemingly outrageous statement of enemies of humanity called Muslims. Because of the following facts, ladies and gentlemen. 100% of all acts of terror around the world against infidels kuffar, unbelievers kafirun, are committed relentlessly by Muslims, especially against Christians. It is unbelievable that the most persecuted people in the 21st century are Christians by Muslims. And all of the Christian denominations, from Catholic to Protestants and others, are silent. For those who do not know, 
currently unbelievers kuffar represent 80% of humanity, comprising all Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews, atheists, agnostics, etc. That is, all humans, 7 billion of them, who are not Muslims. Since Muslims will not stop their terrorist activities, more and more European and American citizens, ordinary, middle-class, tax-paying, decent human beings, will start movements to remove from office anyone who is not willing to listen to them and to their fully justified fear of Islam and Muslims. This fear of Islam is not Islamophobia, because phobia represents irrational fear, while fearing Islam and Muslims is totally rational. Why? Considering the fact and reality that Islam demands that we non-Muslims are faced with three choices, and they are, one, convert to Islam whether we like it or not. Two, submit to Islam Sharia as third-class citizens in humiliation and degradation forever. Three, and failing accepting these two conditions to be slaughtered. Hence, Islamophobia is an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms used by Muslims and their servile apologists to silence any and all revelations about the despicable cult of Muhammad called Islam. These mass demonstrations have already started all over Europe. True, at the moment the movement in each city is small in number, about 18,000 per demonstration. But these demonstrations are gaining acceptance by more and more citizens who are realizing that if they do not stand up and be counted against the Islamization of Europe, Islam will conquer Europe without war, bringing about the dark ages of Sharia forever. This year, I'm predicting, will represent the ultimate watershed between Islamic terror and European awakening. That they, the Europeans, at last realize that they must fight back with any and all means available to secure the future of their generations. The USA will suffer exactly the same process. Anyone listening who does not agree with my assertions, do us a favor, call in and tell us why. Back to you, sir. Our audience, uh, IQ, was really would like to know some of your background, if you could, sir. With pleasure. Uh, it's, even, it's difficult, but I'll tell you why. Okay. I grew up in Baghdad, Iraq. My mother tongue is, of course, Arabic. My parents were secular and highly educated, unusual in the area, who sent me to Europe to study. While in Europe, with much more freedom and unlimited access to information, I was intrigued to read the Bible to explore what I found in the Quran about its stories. To my amazement and shock, not a single reference about the biblical characters mentioned in the Quran was correct. Everything I read in the Quran either contradicted or was way out of line to the original stories in the Bible. What started as an item of exploration became a personal research project that turned into a mission. My mission is simple without resorting to war or violence, to utterly discredit Islam as a religion by proving beyond a shadow or even a reasonable doubt that Allah, the God of Islam, is not God, not the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, thus instantly discrediting Muhammad as a prophet and the alleged divine origin of his Quran, as I shall fully demonstrate to you today. I have thus far spent over 30 years researching, comparing, and contrasting subjects about Muhammad, his Quran, Hadith, Sharia, the Hebrew Bible, the New Testament, Hinduism, Buddhism, Arab and Islamic imperialism, and their slave trade, Arab history, as well as the Arab-Israeli conflict. By November 2000, I was ready to publish my book titled 
lifting the veil, the true faces of Muhammad and Islam. I sent the preamble to the three top publishing firms in England, because I wrote it in English. After two weeks, I received letters from them refusing to publish my book, mentioning that my conclusions are very unconventional, extreme, and offensive. Please remember that I had submitted these documents just before the turn of the century to the 21st century. I found out later from one of their representatives that their refusal was based on a single sentence that I put in my prologue, and which said that the greatest threat to human civilization in the 21st century is not nuclear weapons, but most assuredly, fundamentalist Mohammedan Islam with or without weapons of mass destruction. This prediction turned out to be prescient, in full, on the 11th of September 2001. I was later able to publish with Author House, an American company, all three volumes of the trilogy. By the way, in the last six years, I have only been hosted by American talk shows so far, almost 890. And not a single talk show in the whole of politically correct Islam, submitting and graveling Europe. I would like our listeners to know that although I am an Iraqi by birth, I am nonetheless 100% American patriot in my spirit, individuality, and intellect. As usual, I would like to point out that everything I state, no matter how exceptional, arrogant, bombastic, or even outrageous sounding it may be, I can and do back it up to the hilt with knowledge and dare anyone listening to or reading my articles to prove anything I reveal wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst nightmare and the four horsemen of the apocalypse of Muhammad and Islam are called knowledge, 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 and knowledge. All I ask from those who may get upset with me, if you think I'm a hot air balloon, do yourselves a favor. Pinprick it and bring it down crashing to earth. In short, Put up, or forever. Shut up. Back to you, sir. We would like to have you come to the States for a multi-speaking tour and a book tour. Yeah, I would love to do that. I'll tell you when I'll do it. If I'm given 30 minutes primetime television to explain myself to the, to the world. I mean it, I mean it, I'll come. I'd, then I don't mind being killed for showing myself. I really don't. Mm. Because this is my mission. Mm. My mission is to be on primetime television in America. Mr. R- Mr. Rizzoli, to destroy we Quran have been, and Muhammad Mr. in America, primetime television. Mr. Rizzoli, we have been in the counter-terrorist business since 1974. We have been personally countering terrorism since before it was fashionable. We currently work beginning 74. We help form and train the world's counter-terrorist organizations, the United States Delta Force, British SAS, German GSG-9, and so forth. So if you come here with us, I promise you, it, around you will be the safest place in America. Over to you, Mr. Rizzuli. Oh, you, you are know, lighting up. We're, we have a tsunami <laughs> of emails. I can't read I'm them. Glad fast enough. Can you, you write, can you read them? Yeah. Fast We're getting overwhelmed with uh, emails. People are okay. people are very interested in your personal history as Backpack said. You're the, we I'm understand. Not well, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You've got to understand that. My fear is not for my life. My fear is to be dead before I can finish my mission. That's my fear. Otherwise, I'm not afraid. You are doing a wonderful mission. We've got a question question here. Let me try to read it to you. Is your life now in danger in Europe? If they find out where I am, I'm dead. It's 
It's very okay. simple. By the way, I get a lot of emails under, you know, uh, arrasuli at gmail.com. That's my international uh, email. Besides the ones that say, God bless you, every single one which comes from a Muslim, they're going to t- they're telling me how they're going to cut me to pieces, burn me, murder me, butcher me. You know, waste of time. I'm not afraid. If I were afraid, I wouldn't be doing what I've been doing. I wouldn't have wasted 30 years. I wouldn't say wasted. I wouldn't have spent 30 years of my life to get to the position where I am. No way. All I want to do is to enlighten people. I never even say to people, read my books. I'm the only one ever published three books who does not advertise them. For the simple reason, if somebody wants to learn about Islam, they have to read my books. But the only man in the street, I don't advise them because they, it will be way over their head. And they don't have to read my books. All they have to do is Google my name, al Rasuli, A-L-R-A-S-S-O-O-L-I. Go to my website. Top left-hand side, there are chapters. Click on chapters. I have 312 audio videos. Spend one hour of your time listening to chapters 1 to 10. Not 300, 1 to 10. You will know more about Islam than 90% of humanity. Free of charge, by the way. I never charge anything. Uh, please say the name but, of your books and how people can get them. Yeah, simple. The books are called Lifting the Veil, The True Faces of Muhammad and Islam. They are on Amazon and all uh, the publishing com- companies called Author House. It's an American company. But as I said, you don't need to buy. By the way, also I give advice free of charge. Do not buy the Quran. Google the Quran and read only the first nine chapters. There are 114 surahs in the Quran, 114 chapters. You don't need to waste your time. Read the first nine. And after reading the first nine, you come to the conclusion that there is nothing wrong with it. I advise you to go to a mental asylum. (laughs) <laughs> we hear you. We're getting flooded with emails. One of the big questions is, um, why do you, IQ, call Islam a cult and not a religion? Simple. Google the definition of religion and Google the definition of cult. Religion has got to do with a divinity, with a God. Commandments from a divine. Islam has nothing to do with God because Allah is not God. Allah is Muhammad. So when you follow the rules and regulations and traditions of a man, it's called cult. We had the cult of Stalin, the cult of Saddam Hussein in my country, the cult of uh, Hitler, the cultism. These are cultists. So Islam, calling Islam peaceful and or a religion are two of the most outrageous descriptions that have ever been insinuated in to the human consciousness. Outrageous. They're not. Islam has nothing to do with peace. The root of Islam, the word, is aslama. It means submission. Submission to what? To the will of one God. As far as they're concerned, their God is called Allah. But Allah is not the same as the God of Jesus, Muslim, and Abraham. I'm going to prove it to you in a few minutes, if you allow me. Uh, We're going to go to a short break, and then we'll... Continue with we'll go your... the break. Okay, here we go. Yoda here. For our listeners, for our audience that possess 1,000 or more email addresses, write down impactanalytics.com. I say again. Impact Analytics. Tim Kalin, the Chief Executive Officer of the Florida-based company Impact Analytics, has together a consortium. Fast-forwarding here, Tim can explain it much better than I can. You send him a list of emails. He puts them together. He aggregates them into a consortium. This leverages, commands a lot of attention from prime Fortune 100 advertisers. Fast forwarding. At the end of the month, during the month, 
Tim puts out conservative patriotic newsletters under your name. At the end of the month, Tim sends you a check for your effort in promoting conservatism, in promoting patriotism for our democracy. Once again, write to Tim Kalen, impactanalyst.com, and tell him that Yoda in Backpack referred him. Incidentally, I work with Tim in Beirut shortly after the Marine barracks and before that, the embassy bombing. Tim was with a major letter government agency in I have and would trust him with my life. I recommend Tim Kalen, impactanalytics.com, without reservation. We're back with uh, Al Razuli. If you want to keep going with where you were before we went to the break. No problem. The question that everybody should ask from the Muslims. Is Allah, the God of Islam, the same as the God of the Bible? This is literally the most important question that anyone can ask about the cult of Muhammad and Islam. All other questions regarding Islam become irrelevant, as I shall shortly prove. Before I answer this very significant question, I need to make our audience aware of items that neither American nor European media, politicians, and or academia ever bring to their attention. Dear Americans, what I'm about to reveal to you today, and hopefully in future talks, are facts that are historically and theologically so so shattering and devastating in their simplicity and in their contents that I must start with my conclusions first and prove each and every one of them as I go along. First and foremost, no Muslim and no scholar of Islam or any of their apologists will ever point out at the beginning of either their books or their lectures the extremely simple but most overriding and fundamental observation, which is the following irrefutable fact, that humanity has only the words of a single man called Muhammad bin Abdullah as transmitted to us by his companions in the Hadith, declaring that he was the messenger of Allah and that Allah revealed to him the verses of the Quran over an incredibly long period of time of 23 years as and when he needed a revelation. I call these made to order revelations as proven by the Hadith. Dear listeners, based entirely upon all the Islamic records, there is not a single mention of an eyewitness report by any of Muhammad's wives, nor by any of his most intimate companions, that any of them ever heard Muhammad and Gabriel talk to each other. Or had any of them seen Gabriel and Muhammad together? I repeat again, in the hope that my words will sink in. All that humanity has or will ever have in information about the events that Muhammad asserts occurred to him, most of the remarkable ones of which conveniently but understandably occurred at night with no eyewitnesses, are the words of a single pathological liar called Muhammad bin Abdullah, unsubstantiated, unobserved, unwitnessed, and uncorroborated by any other independent source. In no proper court of law would such testimony be accepted as true. The fact that Muslims believe the verses of Muhammad's Quran as actually revealed to him by a God called Allah through the angel Gabriel sets the seeds for the utter refutation that Allah is God, the same as Yahweh, the God of the Bible, because the verses of the Qur'an contradict each other destructively, as I shall demonstrate. According to Muhammad's Qur'an, in numerous crystal clear verses, Allah revealed the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, comprising Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, to Moses. 
unfortunately for Muslims, almost every verse in Muhammad's Quran contradicts the biblical original narrative, making it utterly impossible to have any true omniscient God revealing two or more conflicting scriptures. Therefore, I assert without equivocation that it is by divine will, qadra ilahiyya, that's in Arabic, and divine justice, haqq or adil ilahi, that the very hadith, which are stories about Muhammad from his companions, that explain to the followers of Muhammad his Quran and his Sunnah, Sunnah means Muhammad's deeds, thoughts, and attributes based on the Islamic records, are the very same Islamic scriptures that utterly discredit Muhammad as a prophet and the alleged divine origin of his Quran. Ladies and gentlemen, it is of supreme importance that you should be aware that it is an incontrovertible fact that the whole structure of the cult belief system of Muhammad and Islam stands or falls like an unstable inverted cone or pyramid based entirely upon a single Islamic dogma that the God of Islam called Allah is God, that Allah is the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham. Hence, by proving beyond a shadow or even a reasonable doubt, based entirely on the Islamic records that Allah is not God, and most assuredly not the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, then Muhammad is proven to have been a pathological liar and not a prophet, and his Quran is most definitely not divinely inspired, thus forever devastating the fiction that Islam is an Abrahamic An email just religion. came in, uh, Al Razuli, from Boston, yeah. and they want to hear about your $1 million bet with the Council American uh, Islamic Relations, also known as CARE. Um, you have a $1 million yeah. bet outstanding with them. Well, no, it's, 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 really it's an aggregate. I, I'll tell you what it is. The $1 million is not $1 million. I have one and a half million dollars in one hundred thousand dollar sections, because I mean to say one million dollar for one bet is, is unreasonable, but a hundred thousand dollars sounds much more reasonable. And I have asked and begged be care year after year for the last six seven years to debate me whether they want it on video or whatever to debate me in public. They wouldn't do that. And I did the same thing with the Islamic Center of North America, the Council of Islamic. Again, nothing. So the bets are there. All he's got to do, anybody wants to do, is you Google my name and listen to them, to the bets. It's not one single bet. Let's say 100000 I just put $200,000 a few minutes ago to prove there is such and such a verse in the Quran. It doesn't exist. $100,000 that hijab, the covering of the woman does not exist in the Quran. It doesn't, it, there is no word hijab denoting the covering of a woman. In the Quran, they say it's in their religion. Or I say their religion should be in the Quran, but it's not there. Niqab is not in the Quran. Jerusalem, $100,000 to find the word Jerusalem anywhere in the Quran or Hadith. None. So it's an aggregate of everything. Does that answer you? Yes, uh, that's that's great. Uh you you also um are warning everybody about sharia law or sharia what is your what, why is that so important well let me continue with the destruction of muhammad and sharia would come into it also if you allow me to continue yeah sure okay as i was saying it stands to reason that according to our religion beliefs the attributes of god are forever existing, all-knowing, all-powerful, which means omniscient, sorry, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. Now I shall proceed to destroy Muhammad's Quran and his God, Allah. Case number one. I'm going to quote in chapter and verse the name, the chapter, the verse, so that anybody listening can Google it instantly. Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 46. It reads, and in their footsteps we, Allah, sent Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming the Torah, the law of Moses, that had come before him. We sent him the Gospels 
Injil in Arabic. Therein was guidance and light and confirmation of the Torah that had come before him. Let me explain the inherent implications of this verse. First, Allah proclaims that it was he who revealed the Torah, the Torah, or the, five, the first five books of the Bible, comprising Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy to Moses. Second, this verse also asserts that it was Allah, the God of the Muslims, who also revealed the Gospels, Injil, all four of them, to Jesus after confirming Allah's revelations to Moses. Dear listeners, anyone with two brain cells of logic who knows the New Testament will also know that the Gospels were never revealed to Jesus by anyone since they were written 50 to 100 years after Jesus was dead and resurrected. Hence, I raise the simplest of questions. How is it possible for Allah? If Allah were the same as the omniscient God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, not know this fact. How could the angel Gabriel, the alleged messenger of Allah, who 620 years earlier predicted the arrival of Jesus as the redeeming Messiah, deceive Muhammad with such a blatant lie. Allah, therefore, cannot possibly be the same as the God of the Bible. I rest my case one. Now, some politically correct dimwit will scream, how can you deny that Allah is not God based on such flimsy case? Well, my answer will be is this. By the time I finish the next one, or the next case, in less than 60 seconds, are there anyone to make the same asinine remark? Case number two. Al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 157. They said, We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein, are full of doubts, with lack of knowledge, but only conjecture. Because, for a certainty, they killed him not. Dear listeners, as I had already demonstrated in case one, the Quran clearly asserts that it was he, Allah, who revealed the Gospels to Jesus, and we know for a fact that this is a blatant lie. But, let us for an instance be the devil's advocate by willingly allowing this utterly stupid falsehood to be accepted as fact. I recapitulate, I recapitulate that in case one, Allah asserts that he revealed the Gospels in jail to Jesus. But anyone having read the Gospels would also know that all four Gospels assert that Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day. Thus, totally contradicting Allah's present revelation. These anomalies and discrepancies demonstrate that Allah, the God of the Muslims, has not only shown an incredible lack of knowledge, but has, in the second case, totally contradicting himself from the first. Once again, I would like to point out to you the obvious. If Allah were the same as the omniscient God of the Bible, how is it possible? that he was deceiving Muhammad or being in such blatant error. After all, in case one, Al-Ma'idah 5.46, Allah insists that it was he who revealed the Gospels to Jesus. Hence, there is absolutely no margin of error, either linguistically or logically, regarding the meaning of these verses. Moreover, ladies and gentlemen, with this single verse, Muhammad's Quran, obliterates the whole concept of Christianity. Why? Because without death and resurrection, there is no Christianity. Once again, I have proven beyond a shadow or even a reasonable doubt, based entirely upon the Arabic scripture of Muhammad's Quran, that Allah cannot possibly be God, and most assuredly not the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham. Back to you, sir. So one of the things is uh you know there's there's the statistics are 500 million non-Muslims have been killed since uh Muhammad slithered on the earth you know what are your thoughts about all the non-Muslims you know almost uh 
half a trill well half a billion have been killed. What are your thoughts on that? That's a fact, by the way. 140 million blacks were exterminated by the Muslims and by the Arabs, so that 14 million would be sold to the Americas. 110 million were exterminated in India. 70 million Muslim, uh, Christians were exterminated. Tens of millions of Buddhists were exterminated. Millions of Jews and others were exterminated. Yes, 500 million is not an unreasonable number. That's a fact. It's not an unreasonable number. You know, you have blacks in America who convert to Islam. They must be among the most stupid animals on the planet. And this is not racism. Why? Because the blacks in America ended in America because their, their forefathers and mothers were butchered, massacred, humiliated, and whatever was left of them who survived were sold to the white man. The white man did not go into Africa. The white man stayed on the ships on West Africa. It was the Arabs and black Muslims who slaughtered, butchered, and enslaved the black Africans. These are facts. Farah Khan can talk from here to eternity as an idiot. The trouble is, you are in America, you are so politically correct, you have become completely useless intellectually. I'm not insulting anybody. I'm telling you facts of life. How could a let me, like let me, Khan, let me, sorry. Let me Let me share with you the real word on the black Muslims here. It started in a prison in Chino, California. Black gangs learned that they pretended they were Muslim. They would get privileges in prison is really how it started. So many of the black Muslims are really street gangs here. They are no more religious. They do it to get attention and for privileges, really. That's all it's about. Many of them couldn't spell the Koran. We've operated against them in law enforcement now almost 20 years. And so that's what the black Muslim movement is here, Mr. Rizzoli. Over to you, You're sir. Done. We're going to go to a You're short done. break, and we'll be back with Al Rizzoli. <laughs> This is Backpack. We want to tell you about a brave American hero, Brigadier General Ernest Ciadino, U.S. Army, retired. Currently serves as senior advisor to the Kurdistan National Assembly of Syria. He also serves as senior vice president of Radon Corporation. Check him out on the web, generaladino.wordpress.com. Yoda, are we privileged to be working with General Adino? Backpack, are we ever? He is a soldier, soldier. General Audino with a small team, like the Green Berets, similar to Special Forces, was embedded with the Kurds. He was decorated in combat in northern Iraq, fighting the current ISIS. So he is certainly a soldier, soldier. It's a privilege for us to have him as a friend of the country, to have him as a warrior. Thanks, Backpack. Again, generaladino.wordpress.com, and it's A-U-D-I-N-O. Mm-hmm. We're back with Al Rusuli. Our Everything's lighting up. We're getting thousands of emails and so many people and engage in this conversation. So uh, I would like. We've got a sorry, but if you don't here. mind, can I can I answer Yoda about the blacks in prisons? Sure. Oh yeah. The blacks Go ahead. in the the blacks in the criminal justice system. You're absolutely right. They're converted because they get privileges. But more important than everything else, they convert to Islam because Islam is music to their ears. Islam allows him to do the rape, the murder, the plunder, the enslavement of others, exactly what they have done in their lifetime. But this time becomes sanctified by Allah. Believe it or not, this is a fact. They convert because Islam is an organized crime syndicate everywhere in the world. Organized crime syndicate 
anywhere in the world because Muhammad started it in Medina 1,400 years ago. Muhammad was Whoa. the leader Whoa. of the first organized well crime said, syndicate in human history. Yeah. Well said, Mr. Rizzuli. I've been in the black neighborhoods, in the projects for the past 40 years, and you are spot on with it, exactly what it is. You give them a license, really, so they're carrying a license of Islam to do what they do. Indeed, you are. Thank you. Thank you. I, I had to explain it to the listeners because it is so important. I had many times pastors asking me, why are they not succeeding in the prison systems in America and in Europe? Simple. The ones who are in the prisons are criminals, and Islam justifies it for them. By the way, as a corollary to what I was discussing, it's very important that Allah is not God, and most certainly not the same as the God of the Bible. Then it stands to reason that the above statements prove that no angel called Gabriel and no God called Allah ever revealed the Quran or anything whatsoever to Muhammad. Hence the most astounding and shocking conclusions based on all the above fully referenced facts are the following. Every letter, word, verse, ayah, and chapter, surah in the Quran were never revealed to Muhammad by a, an angel called Gabriel or a God called Allah. Because each and every letter, word, verse, ayah, and chapter, surah in the Quran are the product of Muhammad's imagination, the secretions of his warped mind, representing his alter ego and his autobiography, but cleverly projected into the unsuspecting mouths of Allah and Gabriel to give them the aura of sanctity and divinity. In a nutshell, Muhammad, Allah, Gabriel, and Satan in the Quran are actually all one and the same. The voice is over of Muhammad, the ventriloquist. It is obvious that the semi-literate Muhammad plagiarized, pirated, plundered, and or perverted stories he had heard from his wife Khadija, her uncle Waraka bin Nawfal, from Christian and Judaized Arabs, got many of them wrong, but nonetheless incorporated them willy-nilly in his Quran to give himself a worthy ancestral background, associating himself with all the most important leaders of the Israelites and the Jews, from Abraham to Jesus. Since Allah is, after all, not the same as the God of the Bible, then Islam cannot possibly be called a religion, because it is, in fact, a cult belief system, the cult of Muhammad. Just we just got sure. an email from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. and, and they're the big new story in 2015 is all the killings by the Islam in uh, France, in Paris, France, um, and all the 10% of the population is Islamic. And there's a lot of no-go zones also where nobody is allowed to go in, in and around France. Um, would you speak to that, please? Yes, of course. In fact, the no-go zones are 751 areas. These are not my figures, ladies and gentlemen. These are the figures of the French. 751 areas. Now, you ask me about Sharia. Let me explain it to you. Muslims use the word Sharia. There are one and a half billion Muslims. Ask what Sharia means. Ask them what it means, actually. Out of one and a half billion, maybe, maybe one million will know the answer. Why? 1.3 billion Muslims do not speak Arabic. Afghanis don't speak Arabic. Pakistanis don't speak Arabic, Indonesians don't speak Arabic, and even those who speak Arabic don't necessarily know the answer. Sharia means the path to the water hole. Why? Is it important? Because in the desert of Arabia, if you don't know the road or the route to the water hole, your probability of existing or surviving is zero. So finding the shortest path to the water hole is called Sharia. So Sharia in Islam means the path, the rightful path to Allah, their God. Sharia stands on two things. The foundations of Sharia are Muhammad's Quran and Muhammad's Sunnah. The Quran, as we know, is the Quran. The Sunnah 
is the traditions or the stories about how Muhammad lived, what he wore, how he cleaned himself, whom he loved, whom he hated, how he butchered people, how he plundered people, and so on and so forth. So Sharia is founded on these two ignoble things, Muhammad Sunnah and Muhammad Quran. Why do I call them ignoble? Because Sharia, like Muhammad, are hate mong is hate-mongering, war-mongering, misogynist, racist, duplicitous, intolerant, vile, and is totally ungodly. And this is exactly what ISIS is all about. This is exactly with every single Muslim entity on planet Earth. They follow Sharia. So when you have leaders in the West, starting with, unfortunately, with Bush, when he said after 9-11 that Islam means peace, this is unbelievable disaster. There is nothing peaceful about Islam. Muhammad, 1,400 years ago, declared war against humanity. All human beings who do not believe that he is the messenger of Allah. 1,400 years ago. Muslims now, we hear you. reports that in those uh, no-go zones that the French police, the uh, emergency and the fire departments are not allowed to go in those 751 no-go zones. Um, yes, they, so can't, what are they can't go in. That? They will not go in. Why am I saying it? Muslims cannot integrate. Muslims will never integrate because they are not allowed to integrate. It's that simple. It's not complicated. The Quran forbids it. So how are the no-go zones uh, Sorry. taking care of their emergency needs and that sort of thing, you know, within oh, they, those? They, they, don't, they really don't care. They don't have any emergency needs. They don't care. Last okay. time there was a fire and the emergency services went in, they were pelted with stones and fire bombs. Muslims cannot integrate. So what they create is a state within a state. And this is what's happening in America, by the way, as we speak. Some of your judges should be put against the wall and shot dead. No judge, no sane judge, no American constitutional judge should allow anything of Sharia to take root in America. I can't be more forthright than what I'm telling you. But the fault is not with the judge. It's the fault with your system. It's the fault with the American people. You know, the preamble to the American Constitution says, we, the people, not Obama, not the government, not Congress, we, the people. And it is a bloody time that we, the people, demonstrate. By the way, today, 700,000 French people went on demonstration against what happened to their uh, colleagues. 700,000. This is the biggest demonstration in the history of France. So well, what are your, uh, can only change. Sorry, go on. What are your reports about no-go zones in England as well? There are, but there are a few of them. But there are, you see, this is the trouble. Muslims, when they are 2%, 3% of the population, they pretend they are part and parcel of these people. Uh, American Muslims say, we are American. Yes, really. Ask any Muslim. You know, it's a very simple question. Any Muslim, you know, ask him a simple question. I am not you. Like, supposing you are asking the Muslim. Tell him, I'm not a Muslim. So according to Sharia, what am I? It's a simple question. If he's a decent person, he will call you an infidel. If he's not a decent person, he will try to get out of it. Either way, you are an infidel subject to death and destruction in the end. So when they take over, when they become 10% of the population that they are in France and in Germany, they create their own social order. They create their own, not only social order, their own state within a state. That's it. It's simple. It's not complicated. Nothing about Islam is complicated. Our criminals... We're going to go to a short break, and we'll be back with Al Razuli. This is Backpack. We want to tell you about a brave American hero. And we're talking about uh, Major General Paul Vallely, U.S. Army Strong. 
StandUpAmericaUS.org is a network of patriot, patriotic Americans. Stand Up America USA collects, analyzes, and evaluates intelligence for the safety of America. Over to you, Yoda. General Vallely is indeed a soldier, soldier. Back in the day, being a ranger, even being airborne, was pretty much the death of a career in the military, in the staid old rumble, rumble military. Yet the good General Vallely somehow was a ranger, had what we call a ranger tab, was airborne, a parachutist, and a jump master. I salute him, as do all my fellow veterans. Thank you, Backpack. What's his address again, brother? StandUpAmericaUS.org. We're back with Al Razuzzi, and we were talking. Hello? Yeah, Yeah, we're back with you. Yeah, okay. So uh, we're talking about no zone. uh, We're hearing reports Dearborn, Michigan, in the United States also has no-go zones. So it's happening. By the way, you have, in America, you have over 30 uh, training grounds by Muslims. Uh, for military purposes, train 30. The FBI knows about them. Uh, Homeland Security knows about them. They are on the Internet, by the way, if you want to check it. There are 30 of them. And, of course, nobody does anything about it. You know, you cannot defeat an enemy if you can't even mention his name. World War II, everybody knew who the enemy was. Nazi Germany, Imperialist Japan. And... Nobody worried about what they're saying about them, what caricatures or cartoons they made about them. But here you have a so-called commander-in-chief, Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, who the minute he got into the White House, forbid and keeps forbidding all branches of America's security apparatus and the Defense Department from ever associating Islam with terror. When anybody with two princes of Lodi, knows that 100% of all acts of terror around the world against infidels are committed by Muslims. So the enemy is not Islam. The enemy is within our people, our leaders. We have to overthrow them, and we shall overthrow them. I'm not talking about revolution. I'm talking about electing people who will do the job better? We have to do to Islam what Islam intends to do to us, but we have to do it before they do it. Now, by proving that Allah is not God, I, this, the enormity, you know, it is the enormity of what I'm telling you today. You still you haven't received it. You still haven't digested it. By proving to the world in every newspaper, in every television station that Allah is not the same as the God of the Bible. What happens? All those Muslims who go on jihad fighting fi Allah for the sake of Allah, believing they would go to Muhammad's whorehouse version of paradise and the 72 virgins will find out. There are no 72 virgins. And that for 1,400 years, All those Muslims who died for the sake of Muhammad, because Muhammad is Allah, died for nothing. And those who are going to die now and in the future will also die for nothing. So we don't need, we can go to war against them, obviously. But in parallel, we have to reveal to the world what I'm telling you. And if there is any human being listening, Muslim or otherwise, who can refute a single thing I said now, please, come and debate me. It's very simple. What do you see happening in America as far as uh, no-go zones and Islam uh, terror that just happened in France? Do you predict an attack on America? No question. I mean, this is a process. It's a process that has been going on for the last 45 years. 
They come, the Muslims, we welcome them. We give them shelter. We give them education. We give them health. We give them money. And what do they do in return? They cheat us. They undermine uh, you, us. Sorry, am I protect, saying something wrong? Uh, do you predict when the attack will be and what kind of an attack it will be on America's soil? Good God. You don't need to be a genius. I don't want to say anything in public. It doesn't take too much to cause America 10,000 dead and a trillion dollars of damage. It doesn't, believe me. It can be done, and it will be done. Muslims are not going to stop terrorizing us. They're not going to stop. Muslims, this is a remarkable thing. We are in the 21st century. There are one and a half billion Muslims comprising 20% of humanity. We, who are not Muslims, whom I call Ummat al-Kuffar, you, double M-A-T, al-Kuffar, A-L, Kuffar, K-U-F-F-A-R, if you Google, I've got a website like that. Ummat al-Kuffar means the nation of infidels, means from the point of view of Islam, we who are not Muslims are Kuffar. So we, Ummat al-Kuffar, 80% of humanity, they are terrorizing us. But let me tell you this. Ummat Muhammad, 20% of humanity, in 57 Muslim-majority states, are the least productive, least inventive, least creative in human history. And they are terrorizing us, Ummat al-Kuffar, the most productive, most inventive, most creative, and most powerful in human history. And our leaders are running like a chicken without a head. I hope it makes sense to you. Yes. Why? Uh, why? Why? They don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to deal with the situation. By the way, I, if somebody wants to Google Ummat al-Kuffar Manifesto, just Google it, Ummat al-Kuffar Manifesto. I created a manifesto on how to deal with Islam. It's 13 articles, all within the law, by the way. Each and every single one is within the law. How to deal with Islam? You need the willpower. The, uh, Sorry. How did the Islams uh, take over France? No, they're not going to take over Islam. It's not going to happen. Why? Because this 9 11 of France, this attack against the cartoonists, is, is, is France's 9 11. For the first time, I think the French public have woken up to the greatest threat to their civilization. Islam is not going to take over. Islam will not be allowed to take over. Because this year, 2015, you will find a revolution by the people to overthrow all those left-wingers who are running the show, to replace them with what we call right-wingers. And the game will be over for Islam. I mean it. There is going to be a civil war. There is going to be a civil war. Because we are not talking about uh, simple things. They're terrorizing us. You can't go in the street without thinking, maybe I'll get blown up. You go to a restaurant, you get blown up. You go to a kosher place, you get blown up. You do your own job, you get blown up. Forget it. Which nation will allow it? Which people will allow themselves to be threatened like this? Nobody. It took 13, 14 years since 9-11 for Europe to wake up. And in how America, will France, uh, you Brazilia, have how will France clean up the uh, 751 no-go zones? What are they? What do you uh, advise for that? Very simple. Within the law, simple. You go to one town at a time. You surround it with ter- troops. You give them 24 hours to dismantle everything. Anybody who objects, you shot him dead. That's it. It's not difficult. And don't talk to me about law. They are terrorists. These people are terrorists. These people are not loyal to, um, to France. They are not loyal to the French people. They are not loyal to the French Constitution. They are enemies within. So, you surround it. Guess what? In, I think it was 1980, something like that, 1982, um, Assad al-Bashar, 
the, the father of the current leader of Syria. He had an uprising by the Muslim Brotherhood in Homs. He surrounded the town. He slaughtered 30,000 people there, men, women, and children, because they were disobeying him. I'm not talking about I need, we need to slaughter them. No. We give them the option. You dismantle it or you're dead. Very simple. Maybe uh, where did politically the correct go? Uh, brain. Uh, we're really, we've got 10 minutes. Uh, we're about to wind up. Uh, this has been a great interview, and we're excited to have you back on. Uh, we've just got 10 minutes left. Uh, what is your takeaway, that the main points that you want our listeners to take away from this interview? All I want them to do is learn about Islam. Do not listen to your uh, media. They're lying to you. Do not listen to your politicians or theologians. They're lying to you. They really are lying to you. Not because I said so. It's a fact. All I want them to do is Google my name, Al Rasuli, A-L-R-A-S-S-O-O-L-I. I don't want your money. I'm not asking you for contributions. Don't buy my books. All I want you to do, Google my name and get learned. Learn. I have another website called in the name of Allah.org. In the name of Allah.org. 780 chapters that cover every aspect of Islam that you can possibly imagine. I'm giving you guys 30 years free of charge. 30 years of research and scholarship free of charge. I'm not asking you for anything. All I want you to do is learn. And don't just listen to the news media. They are deceiving you. You can Google all the information and get it from the French news media, from the Russian news media. Don't listen to only one. That's a mistake. Don't do that. The greatest enemy that you have in America today is Islam. The greatest enemy to humanity is Islam. Who is saying it? Everywhere you look, in Philippines, in Burma, in Thailand, in Russia, in China, in Europe, in Africa, in Latin America. Where can I tell you? The only place where the Muslims do not exist are the North Pole and the South Pole. Otherwise, in every country, they're terrorizing. We are eager to get you. We're eager to get you back, Mr. Rizzoli, and we're not going to pay you next time either. Are you? Thank you. Are you going to be? <laughs> Thank you. you I prefer that. Available? Anytime you want me, just Google me. Give me give me a week or two notice, and then, God willing, I'll be with you. It's been a fabulous show. We're also recommending you, as you know, to other conservative shows. We really appreciate your getting the word out, my friend. If you Thank will, you, sir. sir, say how you can be contacted again, please. Al Rasuli, A L R A S S O O L I, at gmail.com. I'll be grateful if you we email are. me, sorry, if you email me the link to this talk to put it to my website. In addition, our syndicate, it is Sparks Radio Network, will be replaying this show next Friday. So you will be on again through an archive next Friday and it will be promoted through our network. Otherwise, we will, of course, advise you of when and where it's going to be promoted. In addition, Backpack, tell Mr. Rizzuli how we're promoting his righteous, noble cause with the uh, template, if you will. We will be promoting on social media. Uh, we have an account called My Human Compass with over 40,000 followers, and it will be... Newsworthy. Infinity blogs, uh, Reuters, uh, et al., and right. news blogs, and magnifiedview.com. We want everybody to go uh, check out the multi million visited magnifiedview.com and globalfreedomradio.com. It, it'll go out to news wires and as formal press releases, so it'll go far and wide. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I need this. I need it more than you can imagine because I need the message to go out. All I want is for people to be enlightened. That's all I want, really. That's my mission. It's very simple. It's not complicated. We are totally in your corner. It's our pleasure, professional privilege to work with you. 
We will certainly have you on soon. We thank you sincerely. Shukra Kaibir for coming on with us, and we will see you soon, sir. Thank you, Al Razuli. Bye bye, sir. Bye bye. Um, All right. Great. Wow, you had another great guest that we've had. What a lineup we've had this year. Oh, what a what an ability you have to bring on the good guys. My hat's off to you, Backpack. He is quite a student of Islam, and I'm fascinated that he's offered care the Council of American Islamic Relations, their close relationship to the Muslim Brotherhood that our president-in-chief backs to the hilt. I'm fascinated he keeps offering them a bet, and they don't have the guts or the facts to take him on, aren't you? Yeah, it really speaks to what's really going on with the uh, Islam being a cult and not a religion. Certainly does. You can't. I've been there, as you know, brother, from Morocco to Egypt in North Africa. I've operated in and around the Arabian Peninsula, and I discovered that you can't be a Muslim with a small M. Every fiber, every minute of their being is governed by their interpretation of the Quran and Sharia law. No Muslim, however they appear in our precious United States, can really not support the caliphate. They cannot support Islam taking over the world. Look at them today. They're operating worldwide with terrorism. Ilyas Lenin, the Russian communist, said that terrorism exists to terrorize. Well, it certainly does now on Muslim Islam's part. You don't see any atrocities, any terrorism by tall Swedish blonde nuns, do we? No. No. We see it by Muslims the world over. This French thing was indeed an atrocity. We certainly sympathize, empathize, pray for the victims. But I'm glad this time it brought it open out in the open back then. So what are your predictions about the results of the 9-11 of France that just happened? It's going to continue for sure. As, as you know, I don't know that the audience knows. Backpack and I are very active. We have been for decades working with major letter intel agencies here in the United States and with allies. We work closely with law enforcement. We counsel in tactics, strategies, methods, and training. That's why we operate under our pen names, Yoda and Backpack. We keep all the, try to keep the screwballs off our front lawn. I see terrorism continuing around the world. It's all over the world now. Recent events, recent incidents in Australia, throughout Africa, throughout the Middle East. I, I see it here to stay. What do you think, that? Well, we've seen a lot of that, but this what, particular at the Charlie Hebdo uh, cartoonist uh, magazine, was uh, they were really well-trained. And uh, where where's all the training coming from? A bunch of al-Qaeda <clears throat> units, as you know, around the Middle East and elsewhere. Al-Qaeda in, I just spaced the name back then. Yemen. Thank you, sir. Al-Qaeda Yemen has as especially operations in the West, in Europe and in the United States and elsewhere. The two brothers, one of them was trained extensively in Yemen. They have proven now direct connections to senior al-Qaeda representatives, including the American guy that we finally killed with a drone. Al-Zakari, was that his name? That's Anybody right. like that? Yeah. I see it certainly continuing around the world. I don't think see anything stopping it. Unbelievably, <clears throat> President Obama has Muslim Brotherhood, the umbrella organization, over care, over al-Qaeda and others. It's the oldest Islamic terrorist organization in the world. It was founded in 1928. 
and our president has them in senior positions in DHS. He has forbidden the FBI, where we have some hero friends, and they truly are men and women heroes. They're not allowed to say the word Muslim. They're not allowed to say the word Islam. They're allowed once in a great while to say the word terrorist. So he's really tying their hands, in my opinion. Why he's doing this is he doesn't have a strategy to deal with terrorism. He doesn't have a strategy to deal with the Islam threat. So if he keeps downplaying it, not even saying the words, then he thinks that gets him off the hook. But the record, including now in Grant, will prove that it doesn't. What do you think, Backpack? How would... How are we Americans going to react to an attack on our soil here? Well, if that happens, uh, we're going to see uh, grocery stores run out of food within three days, as estimated, and we're going to see a lot of panic. And we're going to see, actually, I, if we have a scenario on magnifiedview.com of exactly that, I recommend everybody go check out that scenario. But we, we're going to see a lot of uh we'll probably see a lot of protests just like what we're seeing around Europe now hundreds of thousand people protesting about what Islam's doing I hope you're right in that respect we work 911 as you know with law enforcement and as you said in a previous program it was gratifying to see all the flags going up and patriotism come out again but we Americans forget quickly don't we it seems to be, yeah, but we want to hope to, uh, it, it can be a unifying uh, where we come together, just like 9-11 when everybody brought out their flags and we joined together as one people and we were united. Um, we're going to, we have a caller who's just calling in. We're going to take a question. Uh, caller, if you want to go ahead and say your handle and, and speak your mind. Hey guys, this is uh, Jack calling you. How are you? Love your show and you do a great service. All I could say is basically without two things, well, well, how can we win a war against this uh, unless we if, – if we're going to be politically correct, we're not going to be able to win the war. And we can't win a war without being in politically correct or unpolitically correct or even collateral damage. So they want to win uh, these wars, so to speak, and they want those two elements that have to be in place. They're not willing. They're unwilling to offend people and – and it, it, we just we're not going to get anywhere the way they're playing this uh this is not it's not going to turn out well there has to be collateral damage there has to be people getting offended how else can you win this war just how is that possible and, and, without those two important point you made jack stay with us yeah i've been in more wars i've been in a lot of wars that they didn't even dignify by having names we're doing it again we're sending drones over, we're bombing empty buildings, we're knocking off a camel here and there. We don't have the will and the commitment. Our sources, privileged sources in the Pentagon, once again are pulling their hair out with our lack of commitment. As our founding editor-in-chief, Jenna Rama, says, up to now in Iraq, we've simply been in the way. The Sunni versus Shi thing is not new, as most of the press media tells you about hell. It's gone on since the year 700 and before. This is what these people do. So as you said, we somehow need to get the will. Jack, what do you think? With enough, with enough activity here, terrorism attacks, as we portrayed on the magnifiedview.com, how do you think the public's going to react? To it? It's going to be it's going to be the worst scenario. I mean, look what happens when your local uh, storm comes blowing through from Antarctica or whatever, just some sort of major uh, snowstorm. It's like uh, everything's gone before the storm because the you know the weather. And people always pay attention to the weather. You know, it's music or the weather. That's the only two things people care about on, on the radio these days. And they don't care to check out Fox News on TV or check out conservative talk radio. That's, they just care about those two things. And as soon as they hear about the weather coming, everything's gone. I mean, after a week or so, you know, neighbor. Or you know, oh, yeah, it's they, an area like the. 
They wipe out the store in a matter of hours. They buy six gallons of milk and 12 loaves of bread. What the... <laughs> Let me let me tell you, Jack, and the audience, what our insiders in the highest level, some retired recently from major letter intelligence agencies, are predicting. That is a multiple simultaneous attack on six cities, probably Miami, New York, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Vegas, and L.A. Al-Qaeda, who are competing now for recruits, they're competing for funding with each other, with each other's units and ISIS, are under pressure to do something for more recruiting and more funding. So the idea of a big bang is what they really go for, would certainly exceed 9-11 here in six American cities, possibly with dirty bombs. The real insiders, the professionals that do this for a business, are predicting a dirty bomb probably Monday morning during Midwest and East Coast rush hours. So that's the latest, greatest from the real experts, not the sociologists that the lamestream media go to the middle of Iowa and they make out a name plate for some sociologist and call him a counter-terrorist. We have the real deal sources and whistleblowers. We have another caller, area code 336. Would you like to go ahead and say a handle and speak your mind? Yes, how you doing? Uh, my name is Yakushima. I'm calling from North Carolina. Hello. Thanks for the call, uh, brother. You- Thank you, brother, for having me. Uh, I want I want to say a couple of things, um, if I if I can, um, and I'll make it quick. Um, the first thing that I want to say is that um, I want to thank God for God. You see, because He He truly is the God of all. He, he's a true God of me, you, and my other brother on the phone, and all of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say that for reasons because. It, it 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 hit me in my heart though when when I understood about the the Arab slave trade and uh and the cruelty I mean the the mass cruelty fifteen hundred years of slavery uh, for black people and then I wondered today how could any black man call himself a black Muslim like the uh, like the brother was saying um, if you knew what was done to your ancestors how could you call yourself a Muslim so they do that, like you said, uh, uh, join uh, the organization, a lot of them did in America, uh, through uh, prison and stuff like that. They don't really know what was done to their ancestors, don't even have no history or clue uh, that the uh, uh, Arabs had them in slavery for over 1,500 or more years and then sold them into the hands of the Europeans. So this is what I'm saying. The second point that I want to make is that I am proud to be an American. I'm proud to be an American that is awakened among others in America that has become awakened too, to know that my country, my world leaders, the leaders of this country are are, are, are putting us in grave danger. And, 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 and as I was sharing with a colleague of mine from Europe, I was, I was, we was talking about the situation that was going on in Europe. And, and as, as I was sharing with him, I said, if you can see what is really happening, what's really going on, I say, I say, it's almost as if we, the American people, like the brother was saying, from from cross seas, from the Middle East, if we, the American people, don't take back our 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 empire, it, it's gonna it, it's falling underneath our hands right now. And 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 what's so sad about what's happening in in France is is that the one the one the warnings was there. All the warnings are here in America. All the warnings are there. And what they're doing is, uh, like the brother was saying, and it's a planned strategy. They're not trying to uh, do this thing with weapons of mass destruction. What they're doing is they're overpopulating your cities. They're overpopulating your town. And then at the right moment, at the right time, when they hear the sound of the Avon, or the sound of the call, that's when they step forward and step up and overtake the cities from within, from within, from without. 
and that's that's what's happening. That's what's happening in Canada, in Australia, in France, and and this thing is serious. What what my country, what what my world leaders need to wake up and do is see the seriousness of this thing instead of being interested in their foreign interests in the Middle East and see that their greed is putting the American people and 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 not just the American people, but Global greed, the greed of France, the greed of Europe, is putting the citizens in danger because you're taking away our our, our amendments to bear arms and and and, and our freedom to, to to have the right to bear arms to protect ourselves. So that's what I'm saying, brother. That's that's what's happening in America. Is that is that this caliphate is not just a caliphate. It, it's it's a rise. It's a it's a rise of an empire. But this is the greatest we, empire in the world. This is the greatest empire in the world, the American empire. And I believe. Go ahead, uh, Yoda. What were your thoughts? We are so gratified with this fellow's call. Stay on with us. Where are you located? What big city are you near, brother? Go ahead, Eric. Yes, sir. North 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 North. North. Yes, sir. North Carolina. Right on. We are so gratified that we're reaching out to you. How did you hear about the program? Uh, yes, sir. I was. Um, well, I've, I've been on um, since about a uh, half hour, hour and a half now, and um, I was uh, online. And I usually love checking out this uh, website, but tonight I thought it'd be the first time I speak up since um, uh, the situation that are happening is, is a very calling need now, not to remain silent anymore. Well, we thank you, uh, sir, for calling in, and uh, please go ahead and check out magnifiedview.com. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, we were, the calls are lighting up. Uh, area code 804, would you like to say your handle and speak your mind? No, I'm just listening. Okay, thank you just for calling in. Right there. Thanks. All right, great. We appreciate your call. Uh, we've been. This has been a great show today. Uh, My word, yeah. My word. Appreciate the callers. We're we're getting to the right people, and they're they're learning as we're learning every day, aren't we, Backpack? Yes, sir. And uh, it's quite a thing that we're going through. Um, Jack, did you have another question and comment? Go ahead, Jack. That's a lot. Okay, Jack. we lost Jack. Yeah. I see Jack. it as a tremendous problem sneaking up on us here. I hope that. We're certainly getting the word out, as is the magnified view. There is a de facto no-go zone. Imagine a little country within our country and democracy that can exist near Motown, Dearborn, Michigan. How in the hell backpack did 751 no-go zones exist around Paris, Marseille, Lille, Lyon, other countries. How the hell did that go down, do you think? Uh, it's amazing. And uh, as our guest today, IQ, Al Rizzuli, points out, that if there's a fire, they just deal with it on their own, and they pelt the uh, the emergency personnel who try to help from coming in the neighborhoods. It's, you know, it's, uh, well, there's a saying, a come to Jesus meeting, where they're going to have to do that all around Europe and the world, what we're being faced with. They have a problem, do they not? I sure hope we can avoid it here. I hope we can. In fact, we have on file a thousand Muslim compounds here in the United States. I say again, we have on file, we can make them available to anybody that writes to us, write personally to Yoda at magnifiedview.com. May take a little while, but I personally answer each and every email and I can supply you with a thousand Muslim compounds. So that's a no go thing, but it has a big fence around it and armed guard. So that is serious and stunning. We've researched it through Google Earth and otherwise you can you can easily find them there and take a look at them. Well, I am ever the optimist backpack. We've got 22 million veterans here. We have untold coppers, firefighters, EMTs, and hard work-a-day citizen patriots. Do we not? Yes, sir. That is correct. 
And I don't believe every generation we've had has been faced with a major crisis as we are. Right. I believe sincerely that when it gets bad enough here, and I don't know what the hell that needs to be, but the veterans, the cop next door that teaches your kids soccer, firefighters, we're going to get a bunch to stand up and deal with this, whatever this current goofy president does. He's clearly a closet Muslim and a closet communist, isn't he? That's he's, correct. He's put Muslim Brotherhood in senior positions in Homeland Security. He has them as czars. He's backed the Muslim Brotherhood to this day. Even, though the word's out that the Muslim Brotherhood is the umbrella first terrorist organization of Islam, but he's still actively supporting them. He had his Secretary of State Hillary speaking of how wonderful they are. I don't know where it's going or when, but I am indeed predicting from open sources that we resource and from private sources that we're privileged to have, I'm putting my reputation, the reputation of the magnifiedview.com, that we will see terrorist activity here similar to France within the next 90 days. What think you, Backpack? What do you think? I think one of the biggest takeaways I took from the story was that there were one of the terrorists, one of the brothers that uh, killed the 12 people at Charlie Hebdo. He was actually on a U.S. no-fly zone. Is there more coordination from your expertise in counterintelligence? Um, counter, and, uh, you know, and how did that happen? How did that person move freely among France when he was on a no-fly zone in the U.S.? A, a couple reasons. One certainly, as our guest Mr. Rizzuli said, it's the political correctness. They really don't want laws enforced. They want to hide behind political correctness. But otherwise, it's a function of manpower. I've heard from the lamestream media now they could have been. They should be following this guy around. Hell, there's thousands of. Them. We and the French and anybody does not have that kind of agent pool to follow all these terrorists around all the time. It's just a matter of manpower. I, hey, what a show, partner. I was, can't wait for next week. Yeah, it's a great show, and we're we're proud to be syndicated with the pop of the radio networks, the Spark Radio Network, K98 Talk, and the top five news picks on Top Talk Radio, along with Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, and other household names. I want to thank you, Ricky Robinson, for featuring us prime time every Friday, and it's uh, with uh, Spark Radio Network. It's been a great show. It, it has. Been. Thank you, Yoda, and thank you to all the listeners. God bless. Thank you, my brother. Thank callers. Have a safe week. Thank you.